So let us get right into it. Blessings upon you, noble Odo Nobunaga, ruler of the land where the sun rises. May you long walk among its flowering blossoms. You are the ruler of Japan, the land of the right. So we just load into the game, and the first thing you're going to notice is that I have uh, some weird icons around me, and I also have these two units here. And so let's just start off with the units. So this is your settler. Um, you can tell it's usually the guy with a little flag on it, or you can hover it, and I'll say settler. And the settler is essentially the guy who builds a city, much like the settlers of old days. You know, they were the original people, the OGs of the town, whatever you want to call it. And then you got these guys right here. Now these are the warriors, and the warriors are your cheapest first unit you'll ever get in the game. Um, they essentially will go fight off people and kind of defend your territory. And so what you're going to want to do first thing that you do when you get in is go ahead and found your city. So you can hit B or click here. And the second thing you're going to want to do if you're wondering, um, out of the box I don't think you have these icons on. I can't honestly remember. But if you click this little um, toggle map options on and off, it's the resource icons. I prefer to play with this on. Uh, some people don't like to do it, but I personally do. And then the other one that you might think about doing might be the yield icons. And um, I think the yield icons, if you're going to do them, you kind of need the hex grid, otherwise it, it feels really overwhelming personally to me. But the yield icons is essentially once uh, your, your, your city, right, it has all of these tiles within it, respectively. And so each of these title, tiles rather is worth something. It's a resource, right? And so it could either be this yellow thing, which is your, your gold. It's worth gold. Uh, it's, you've got your Granny Smith apples, which means it's food. And then you got your little hammers, which basically means that it gives some kind of production value. And we'll talk a little bit more about production here in a bit. But uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the yield icons off. And we'll keep the hex grid on just for, uh, I guess, reference purposes. And so the first thing it's going to do after you found your city is you're going to choose your production. And you'll notice that... Um, it's going to recommend something. Uh, usually it's indicated by some kind of advisor's uh, icon, so economic advisor is yellow. And you'll see the other ones later. Uh, I think red is red is the honor guy or the war guy, blue is the science guy, and, and so forth and so on. And so you'll notice that it says 10 turns is how long it's going to take to build this monument. Now the first thing you want to do when you get into the game is create a monument, and the reason why is it, it basically creates cult culture and culture is how you uh, more or less unlock this talent tree-esque thing um, but the other thing too is it also uh, speeds up the growth of your territory so this little um, red border here that you kind of see around your land that's your your border and so the more people citizens you get in your territory uh, the faster the border will increase and so let's just talk about these icons and kind of what they mean, right? And so the Granny Smith apple is your food icon. I just call it an apple. It's easy to remember. And it basically, like it says in the tooltip, it determines how fast your city grows to acquire new citizens. And that's the one that kind of looks like uh, something from Rome. Citizens work the land and collect... Um, food production and gold for the city bigger cities are nearly always better and so the other thing that you be, should be aware of is that see how this is positive like there's no negative number behind that is the more citizens you have the more food you need right because that's just kind of a given like you, i guess you could not have food and they could just starve but let's let's probably not do that since there's enough going on in 2020 um, and then production right here, which is this hammer, it determines how fast a city can build units. And so what we mean by that is each of these things that you can do or build is a unit. And so right now your production is four. And so basically your city can um, has about four production per turn. And so 
you'll start looking at things, and if you look at this monument, the cost is 40, right? And so if you can only do four production per turn, then, well, you just basically take the cost and divide it by four. Now, obviously, the game does it for you, but I figured I'd throw it out there. That way you understand how these turns are derived. Some people care, some people don't. Next thing is this blue science icon. A lot of people call it the flask or the vial or the beaker or the... I don't know, there's like a thousand names under the sun, but this is basically um, how you advance or how you shape your empire and or civilization, just basically how you want to build. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that here in a second. And then the other thing is gold. Gold is yellow or gold as, you know, the gold color might imply. And gold is pretty sacred, I would say, in this game. Gold does a lot of things. It's a big deal. Um, you'll use it for various things throughout the time plane, but we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that after. And then culture. Culture is pretty important. I was talking about that earlier. You have like a social policies, or I like to call them talent trees, and basically these, these policies allow you to shape your, um, your empire, your civilization into a certain direction. and again one of the other one of the major things about this game is there's really a lot of ways to to play and there's also different ways to win um one way to win is the honor method which is essentially you know declaring war on the world and just annihilating everyone else the there's a culture victory there is a faith victory which is this this dove right here there is a tourism victory which is up here um there, there's a lot of ways to win um Really, Civ is very, very complex, but today I think we just get the easy stuff done, and then kind of as you progress, you might want to restart the game now that you know more, or, you know, go from there. So, we're going to go and do Monument, and then now it's going to ask us to select a new research project. But before we do that, let's look at what we have here. And so, these two resource icons, as you can tell, when you hover over them, um, it tells you what they give when worked, and then also, um, you know, what do you need. So if you hover over the actual tile itself, you'll see on the right-hand side uh, that it says cotton is the resource, and it says requires calendar. So you may be wondering to yourself, what is calendar and how do I get that? And then this one right here is stone. And it gives the resource a stone, and then it requires masonry, right? And so you can choose your research here. And once you do that, you're going to open up the technology tree. Now, again, you have your advisors, and I have the the advice off. It gets kind of obnoxious, to be honest. Um, but you can adjust that in the settings. And your economic advisor is always going to be the yellow one. And that basically, as an economic advisor would, normally they, they try to give you uh, the best eco economic approach to any um, update. And then your military advisor is always going to be like the guy who wants to go gung-ho uh, and kind of Genghis Khan on everyone. And then the last one is your science advisor, and that's the guy who is really trying to get the most bang for his buck in terms of um, technology advancements, right? Because if you're really far ahead in terms of science, then you kind of like, you know, if they're still with horses and you got, you know, pew pew cannons, laser beams, then you're probably going to win because that's just, you know, like aliens versus America. But more importantly, so right here, um, we're going to go and go with the masonry. And so we're going to choose research. Instead of just clicking any of these, which you can, you can open the technology tree and you can tell and you can see right here on where's masonry, you know, course calendar and that will kind of help you so masonry it, you need to go down this path right here and then it goes this way so it's going to take 10 turns for any of these as you can tell and then 16 turns for these now the turns or the mounts to get to all this stuff will go down as the more science you get right because that's just quick math right um, it costs 40 to unlock that so we're going to do masonry and if you click here, what's really nice is you'll see like this little like one or if I click here, you'll see like, okay, one, 
and then it goes two, three, four, five, because all of these things require a certain um, pathway to get there. And so if you want to quickly just like, okay, say, hey, like I really want to do calendar, but I don't want to have to think about how to get there. You just click calendar and the game will auto go the quickest way there, which I think is fantastic. That's a quick tip. Um, I learned that like way after and I felt like an idiot just because it's like, oh wow, okay, I don't really have to worry about this every every three seconds. I can just like set it and forget it. So pretty good with masonry. And the other thing is before you end your turn or the game tries to tell you more or less like, hey, a unit hasn't moved or they haven't done anything. And so the first thing you're gonna notice is at the bottom left hand corner of your unit, and that's for anyone. And we'll kind of, as we get different units, we'll kind of look at the difference. You're going to see their movement. And it says your unit may move two more tiles this turn. And then they have a strength. And then the strength is basically how well they perform in combat. And that's what the tooltip says as well. But um, movement in this game is pretty easy to understand. There's different kinds of tiles or different kinds of, um, yeah, tiles, I guess. And each tile has kind of a different aspect to them. So you're going to see, like, I'm hovering over this one right now. It's Grassland River. And then you got this one's Oasis, Grassland. But you'll notice this one's is Forest and Grassland, right? And so Forest, um, forest, Mountains, Hills, when you think those things in real life, you think that they, they take a little bit more effort to go up and down them. It's not like a plain or a desert where it's, like, very straightforward and it's not as rough to like walk through them and so because of that when you walk through these kind of things this guy only had two uh, moves but if he goes through here he's only gonna have one because well the forest impedes him in terms of uh, how far he can move and so that's just kind of a quick tip Ancient um, ruins hold and so that lady was the nice looking lady who tells you what to do and so early game, what you want to do with your warriors um, is you want to look for these ruins. And so I found one here. It's ancient ruins. And so we're going to go ahead and step on them. And every time you basically click into a ruin, if you can find one, is they'll give you some kind of gift. And the gift is completely random. It is RNG. Uh, it can be something really significant, and it can be really something insignificant. And so, in the ruins, you found a treasure, 80 gold. Nice. So the fact that I make 5 gold per turn, and I got 80 gold, that's pretty crazy, right? Um, I wouldn't make that <laughs> in, like, 12 turns, so pretty cool. And so we're going to keep kind of searching around. Oh, look at this. So the first thing you saw here, right, is this little purple Beetlejuice kind of esque looking thing. We're going to click over here, and we've encountered our first city-state. So city-states are neutral, um, I guess, civilizations and civilization. That's redundant, but um, essentially what they do is when they first meet anyone, or in general like you, since you're the person playing, is um, they'll provide you a gift, which they provided us 30 gold. It's pretty awesome. Um, on the top part, you see that they have no ally, but then you have their trait their personality and then their resources if they have any because sometimes city states don't have anything um, but the trait and the personality are pretty important so the trait on here is mercantile um, they provide extra happiness in your empire and manufactured special luxury resources which cannot be acquired any other way and so that's pretty great um, the fact that they're mercantile means that they're really friendly and that plays a really important important role in terms of um, your influence or becoming allies with them or just kind of being on good terms, right? Is if they're more neutral, then allows them to, uh, allows you to basically befriend them easier. And so you can see on here is the personnel is neutral. Uh, they try to mind their own business. I wish we would sometimes do that too. And then the resources they supply. So wine and porcelain, pretty cool. And so we're going to end our turn. And again, oh, see how I went into a forest plane? Instead of getting two turns, I only got one. And so early on, like I said, you really just want to 
kind of explore, and so I found another one. See, ooh, look at this one, militaristic. So they, every trait, every city too, is a, if you read them, and it's good to kind of read each trait, or read what, what they have, um, because befriending them might give you the advantage early game, mid game, super early game, so right now we're like in the beginning era. There's so many errors, I'm not even going to go into that, but, um, so they know the secrets of the winged Hussar. If you're the ally, they have res and they and have researched metal metallurgy, they will provide that unit as the gift. And so, you may be thinking to yourself, what is that? Alright. Good question. No one knows. I'm just kidding, we'll talk about that later. But, um, so we're going to go to our next turn. And so we've already met two city-states, and first thing that I see is this, this area is kind of uh, compact. So we're going to move over here. And we have four turns left on our monument. So there hasn't been too much going on. Let's see some cows here. And so again, early game, you're really just kind of exploring. You're looking for ruins. You're kind of painting the map. Because as you'll notice, there's this giant fog. And that's kind of the fog of war, or the clouds, or whatever you want to call it. It just basically, if you haven't ever explored it before, how are you going to have a map of it, right? Which just kind of makes sense. And so... Oh, monopion thavma. Pion onoma ipi mise, o kalos xenos? Imi Theodora, i fili du Vizandiu. So we just met... For Marhaban one for the okay, and two people. Ana Harun al-Rashid. خليفة العرب هلما إلي وحدثني عن إمبراطوريتك. So each person that you encounter, you'll kind of meet their <coughs> civilization leader. So we just met the Arabian the people, and we just met the Byzantine people. And so we just discovered mining, as you can tell, exclamation point at the top. And we also just finished our production on our monument. And so right now. We have 12 turns to finish our masonry, and we can create a worker in 14. So I think in general right now, let's go ahead and create a worker. Um, so that means two turns after it, we'll have something we can work on in our city to make it grow bigger faster. And so again, we're just kind of buying time. Um, early game is pretty bland. There's not too much to do. Um, if you wanted to, you could opt out of making a worker and build a scout. And a scout can be good. So again, we found another ruin, and you have found the cultural artifacts, which all your citizens, you've received 20 culture. And so you'll notice at the top right now is I have 30 out of 25, which means that I can now adopt a policy. Yeah, pretty sweet, eh? So the game just prompted me a, to adopt a policy. And you're going to notice is there's a lot of policies, right? Um, if you click advanced view, you can see what each policy does. I'd recommend if you're a first time to kind of just read them. Um, in a nutshell, piety is essentially a religious way of kind playing the game where you're trying to win through, you know, conforming them to your religion, whether that be Christianity, Buddhism, blah, 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 blah. I think there's like 25 to choose from, so we'll talk a little about a little bit more about that later once we unlock that. There's the honor way. Honor is essentially the war way, and so that's a fun way. Uh, there's liberty, and liberty is, like it says, best for civilizations which desire rapid expansion. That's cool too. And then you have your traditional way, which is best for small empires. So it greatly increases the rate of border of expansion in cities and also grants three culture in the capital. And then it has more and more born below it. So what we're going to do is I think we will let's do tradition just for fun and we'll go on with our lives maybe one more turn and then end our turn so one good thing that I haven't seen is I haven't seen any barbarians, which is odd. You can see at the bottom there's just processing a turn for barbarian. 
so they're definitely here. They're just, uh, maybe somewhere else. Oh. So, we can adopt another policy. And so the top part is 15% production when building wonders, and one, one plus one happiness for every 10 citizens. And so this little guy at the top, I call it the smiley face level, um, it's your happiness level. So the happier the people you are, it basically, it really doesn't matter how high it is per se. Um, the happiness level is for now, what I mean by that is more or less, yes, it's nice to have a really nice or high happiness level, but in general, uh, as long as you got a frowny face or that really angry face in the middle, right there, that red face, then you're doing pretty good because that just means your, your capital is always going to be building. And so we're going to do this one right here, which gives us 50% production when building wonders and one happiness for every 10 citizens. And so we really can't utilize that very much yet, but as the game goes on, it becomes more significant. So we're still exploring. we got 10 more turns on our settlers. Oh, look at that. Another run. What would you know? So, ruins explored. Your unit equips itself with advanced weapons found in the ruins. Pretty sweet. So, what did they turn into? Um, so, our warriors, which had 8 strength of low uh, before, now have 11 strength. And so they became spearmen. Spearmen are pretty good early game. Spearmen can essentially um, fight toe to toe with uh, warriors and um, do really, really, really well against horses, as you might have thought, because they have spears. They just shank the horses, and then the horses feel really bad, and I feel bad for the horses. So here's what I was talking about earlier. We just encountered a barbarian encampment right here, which you can tell because it basically tells you if you hover over it. But more importantly, if you didn't know that, um, you could just see all of the um, kind of like the camp that's going on. You, can, you got your fire there, and you got your crazy guys around there, and then you got your other random barbarians around here. So uh, we just finished our masonry, and so now we have a few more things we can do. All of these, if you hover over, you can see it again on the right hand side. It says requires calendar, requires calendar, requires calendar. All this stuff just requires calendar. So let's open up the tree again and let's go to calendar because clearly that is what we need to do anything worthwhile. And so if I attack them right now, you can see here it says approximate damage inflicted 49. Your strength is 15.4. So we do have a bonus versus Barbarians, which is plus 40%. And then, of course, is the opposite side, right, is you see that they're going to give us about 18 damage. They have about 8 strength, but you can see, like, this flashing red part, and I think I might blow that up a little bit more, is that flashing red part is the health that they're going to lose. So let's go ahead and attack them. And if you don't like these battles, you can make them fast in the options, like you can just quick battle. But I prefer if we're gonna play Civilization, especially for new people. It's kind of cool to watch them you know, shank each other. It's kind of half the fun in war, right? It's, is watching someone. That came out a lot creepier than I thought it would be. So the people who like Shiani things the most, uh, as you can tell, we're really high up there. Uh, I just haven't spent my gold on anything yet, but... That's not always a bad thing. So, we're going to destroy them. We're going to do one more attack. And so, we've destroyed them. We got two turns left over here. We're still doing our science things. And so, we're, we're progressing. We're doing things right. Um, unit promoted. So, before we do that, let's look at the policy here. So... The reason I would recommend Honor early game is just adopting, as in like literally clicking this button and clicking yes, you get 33% more combat bonus versus Barbarians. And then it'll tell you like more or less, like if someone pops up near you because they, they do just randomly spawn, it'll tell you and kind of show you on the map, assuming that you have vision of it. 
Um, but even if you don't have vision of it, I think it just shows you a fog of war, so you'll just see something like... Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you'll see something like this. So we're going to go ahead and adopt the policy. Do honor. Because you can have multiple policies at the same time. You're not just like, oh no, I just picked this one social policy. I can't have more than one. I'm doomed. No, you can have multiple. Um, it's actually very normal to have, to kind of start here, to go 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 here. Really, it's just kind of like the pathway you want to choose. And so we're going to promote the unit. And you're going to notice that if I hover over them now, I have a 73% bonus, right? And they also have a 40% bonus for being fortified. And so, as you can tell, the damage we'll take is a lot higher. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at the promotions. And so, option one is to heal instantly. And it, it gives you 50 more health, so it puts us as max health again, because we all have 59 out of 100 hit points. And then the second thing about it is it consumes the opportunity for promotion. And so promotion is this. It's, it's essentially increasing your ability in this area. So they have it drill one or shock. So as it, as it says right there, and it's kind of confusing, I think at first, is it increases your combat strength when fighting in rough terrains, hills, force, and jungle. So it gives you an example. So right now, if you were to fight right here, we're on a hill, on a hill, there on a, on a hill, then we would want to do rough. Now, I recommend just in general when you're building units to kind of like just spread them out. I don't think it's good to have all shock or all drill, so just kind of your cup of tea. And then shock is the opposite, right? So if you're not in a rough terrain, you're in open terrain or flat terrain. So no hills, no forest or jungle. So when we mean open, they mean uh, the desert, they mean the plains, and stuff like that. Stuff that's very flat, right? Because it's it's hard to, to fight on, on non-even terrain. And so we promoted them. I went ahead and went with Tundra. Oh, it's our workers ready. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and construct a quarry. So every tile has a recommendation on them. And the recommendations that you have will just kind of depend on what settings you have on. And so right here, um, again, the whole purpose of us researching, yeah, English, the whole purpose of us researching this is just to kind of get it easy um, well, that makes sense. The whole purpose of us re researching this is to create this quarry, which increases production. So we're going to create it. You click Q. Now, one thing is really cool, too, and I'll show you after we make another worker. And so before we do that, uh, you can see right here at the top, it tells you six turns until a new citizen is born. And once you get a new citizen, it increases your, your growth or your border. And then right here, um, at the bottom, you can see now they're asking us to do economic advisor, which is the yellow thing. It tells us, hey, dude, you really need to get another settler because, you know, reasons. And then the honor advisor, which is the red one, the military advisor, is like, hey, dude, you need to put a wall because, you know, people can just uh, jump right in and uh, take our stuff. And it's true. So I think what I'll do, since we're early in the game, Let's look at the purchase screen. So if you click this right here, it basically switches between the turns where basically hot. you can produce them from in your city after so many turns, or you can buy them. So the first thing you're going to notice is that settlers are incredibly expensive. They're 500, workers are 310, scouts are 140, warriors are 200. So right now we're not going to not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and. I think we should build another worker instead of Settler. Channel to clay. Oh, see, look, there's that notification. And so we have a new encampment over here. So let's go ahead and bring our spearmen back because our city is not protected right now. What I mean by that is workers can't fight. And I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying in general that workers are useless, like in real life. I'm saying it so. Um, Though, I guess you could say some workers are useless, but that's besides the point. Uh, and so they're just going to keep building, so every turn 
you're just going to go to them and you're going to hit Q or you click there to keep building the quarry. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get back within the city. And the reason that is, is you saw that alert that there was a barbarian encamped in. It's still right there, you can actually see it. So that means that the barbarians are going to try to invade since we're the nearest city. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can defend it. So I brought our guy back right here. We did a lot of exploring, as you can tell. And look, oh, there's a barbarian. And so now that we're inside this red border here, if we click H or the health icon, or it says fortify until healed, what it does is every turn it tries to it heals themselves. And so if you're within a allied territory, it heals more. And so you're going to see right now, they're at 59. And I'm going to go ahead and click Construct Quarry because they're done. You're going to notice that we have... Uh-oh. Cities, like military units, can defend... So, look what happened, right? Is we did not have anything to defend. And so, these barbarians came and stole our workers. So, we're going to go ahead and attack them with the city. And you're going to notice that it's a ranged attack, so it means they can attack anywhere in the border. And these spearmen, we're going to go ahead and attack them too. And so, even though the barbarians captured our workers, we can get them back. It doesn't mean that they're gone forever, or for any unit for that matter. But specifically units that can't attack back, the barbarians like to take. And so we're trying to get them back. The barbarians are going pretty fast, but that was our only worker, so we really, 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 really need to get them back. So we're chasing them down. So they're over here, and we're going to go ahead and choose research, and so other things in our territory. Animal husband tree. Um, so this one gives us more food, so why not? It's an early game thing, as you can tell right here. It allows establishing an additional trade route, so every one of these technologies, I'd recommend that you just kind of like read over them. They're, they're nothing complex, it doesn't, you know, you don't need a PhD in, in uh, English literature, so it's... It, it's pretty understandable. So, you know, again, we're chasing this guy. We want our worker back. This guy is a jerk. So we're gonna get them. As you can tell, though, our workers over here, you see that little icon? So not only did they take our worker, but they put them in this in the camp. And so what that means is that we can still get our worker back, but now we have to take this camp. And so I'm fortifying here, and the reason that is, is I'm already at 60 health, right? So 60 health out of 100 means that I'm essentially halfway to dead. Alright, so this is the first kind of difficult thing in the game. Depending on what you have available, there's multiple avenues you can go. I'd recommend... Um, personally, I'm going to follow my economic advisor, and the reason that is, is Stoneworks right here. Um, each source of marble and stone worked by the city, the city it produces, yeah, each source of marble and stone worked by the city produces plus one production. And so, that doesn't seem like it's that great, um, but there's other ones you can do as well. So there's a granary that each source of wheat and bananas um, you get plus one more food, and then you got your your wonders, and so um, you have a lot of things you can do. Again, you're gonna see that you've never seen this little purple icon before. This is your foreign advisor, and he recommends building this. And if you're not sure of like what these guys do at all, there's actually a guide on how to play the game, right? And there's different overviews. There's, like I said, Civ is crazy. There, there is so much to go with this game. It's just like, it's absolutely wild. But right now, for giggles, we're going to go into Stoneworks. I just want to make, uh, I just want faster production. And the reason it is, is I want to be able to build things faster. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. 
And you shall not muzzle the ox when he hath tradeth out the corn. Yes. That sounds great. And so if we construct a plantation on here, which, again, this, if you look at this, and you can change it to the advancer if you want to. If you look at this, you can see that the resource itself gives two food and two gold, so why not make it more? And so this lady at the top, she's your economic advisor. I'm going to call her Gucci. Uh, she Gucci g gives you stuff, right? And so she unlocks the ability to construct a caravan. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to... I think we're going to... And I apologize. I think we're going to... Let's consent continue the tradition. So the thing we picked up is garrison units cost no maintenance. And cities with a garrison unit gain 50% range combat strength. And what that means is if this worker, if you put him in here, if he's sitting in the center of the town or the garrison right here, basically the city gets like a 50% damage bonus in terms of range attacks. And also, as you can tell, uh, my guys are healing over here. So it's really great. They're building up. Um, the next thing I think we want to do is maybe we should research sailing, right? And the reason that is is um, trade routes. So this allows us to establish a trade route on water. And you don't always have to follow what your advisors say. Like there, There's no perfect way to play the game. What makes this game unique is that you kind of make your own decisions. So here I am right over here. I'm kind of building up every turn. Uh oh, who's this? Okay. Because I got the spearmen over there. We're still building over here. Yeah, I'm gonna go keep on building up. Uh, so Hanoi desires trade route. And so these are the people who are militaristic, which means that they'll provide us uh, sometimes random units. But their personality is hostile. And so hostile is a, a bit of a pickle to kind of deal with. And what I mean by that is generally speaking because they're hostile it's hard to keep them happy right just think of like the most annoying person you you know and how hard it is to please them but imagine a city of them all right and so at the top you also notice that they have quest and so each of these quests it's in order as it's it's bulleted and so right there you're going to see that they will reward the player that destroys a nearby barbarian encampment they want you to complete a land or sea route, and they want you to defeat barbarian units that are invading their territory. So each of these quests will kind of change the status we are, the status we have with Hanoi, and so this is where we are, we're neutral, meaning that like they don't like us, they don't hate us, they're just kind of meh, you know about us. And if you go left, that's bad, that means like they'll just more or less dislike you, they'll hate you, they'll resist you, um, they just really dislike you, and as you keep going, you'll see like there's like this little cutoff, right? These little grids. And the cut point is essentially where they become from neutral to like, ah, I like you, and then to like, oh, wow, I really love you. You're my best friend. And so at the bottom, you can give them a gift. You can pledge to protect. Um, basically, each of these things have the pros and cons. If you give a gift, basically it gives you influence. But since they're hostile, that's going to drop down really, really fast. Or if you pledge to protect, Pledge Protect is just kind of like signing a peace agreement, signing something that says, hey, if you ever go to war, someone ever declares war on you in example Hanoi, say like Byzantine, everyone's like, I hate these people, they're assholes. It's like, okay, I get that, but I pledge to protect them. Then if they declare war on them, they automatically declare war on you as well. So it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. You always gonna, it's kind of nice because you want to it keeps your influence at a certain level, <clears throat> so it keeps it at 5 instead of 0, but if they go to war or something happens, well then you inadvertently are now in a war too. As for tribute, um, that basically is, is very Genghis Khan, where like, you know, you're like, I see that you have this silk, it would be a shame if you lost that silk. And so you're more or less forcing them to give something to you, and then the last, but certainly not least, is declaring war. 
I don't personally recommend that just because they give you stuff and they're there to help. So, unless they've done something bad to you in the past and you got bad blood, I would not recommend doing that. And Columbo's under attack. Oh no, not Columbus. I mean, Columbo. Uh, that sucks. So, we're gonna go ahead and attack these guys. Our treasure. So this lady is saying our treasures are grown big, that's awesome, I don't care. It's just basically saying that we have a lot of gold. I get it, we want to have a lot of gold, that's a good thing. And so we just got promoted, so the unit got promoted again. And so now you're going to see that there's a bunch of options, right? Um, so Amphibious eliminates combat penalty, penalty for attacking from the sea or river. So if you attack over this body of water, this lake, to another unit, essentially you lose combat bonus because it's harder since we're going to be attacking on that there's no reason to have that and then medic this is a pretty cool one all units adjacent to this tile heal initial five per turn so it's like they're almost in a city so if they're around you and they hit this they're basically healing more i'm personally going to go ahead and just put one into shock just to kind of balance it out i'm going to attack these people again Again, the purpose of this is we're trying to get our workers back. So, woo! Kyoto has grown. We have now five citizens. The new citizen will automatically work the land near the city for additional food and production and or gold. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep constructing things. And, okay, decisive victory. So if we attack them this time, this means that this unit is eliminated out of the game. So we've dispersed them, we've cleared them, and so now we recovered 25 gold. And you see that now this worker is not a barbarian worker. It's a Japanese worker, which is the uh, empire that we have right now, or the civilization. And so that pretty much wraps up the early game in terms of Civ. Um, if I had to sum it up, it's that defend your territory, try to make friends, having friends is nice, having strong friends is nicer, and always try to make sure that, that's, that's not important, always try to make sure that you use or you build your technology towards the area that you started in. An example. If you have cotton or you have stone or horses right here, then you should build something that you know allows you to take advantage of them because units like such as horsemen can only be you know, you can't have horsemen without horses, right? Like that's a given. And so I think what I'd like to do is I, I'm just gonna split this into a part two. And from there we will talk about um, really getting into um, anything after turn 50, and you're going to notice at the top right hand corner of your screen, we're barely in 2000 BC. Like, it, we're not even. Look at this. We're still in the ancient era, which is right here. We just finished the ancient era. So, in terms of moving to the next era, the way you do that is you discover something, or you basically um, you open up this pathway. So, if I were to discover optics, now we we're magically in the classical era, and it moves everyone in the game on too. So anywho, we'll talk about more of that in the next video. So thanks guys for watching. You guys have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.